session i had a desire to bring into focus our efforts at it ip creation enhancement and monetization so if you look back and step back for a second in time and look at the trajectory of growth of astra you will notice that the net turnover of the company has increased consistently over the last 4 years to more than 1000 crores this year if i'm not wrong we were close 426 odd crores in fy20 the entire team at astra has been scrambling to keep up with the sales growth and meet the enhanced order flows the focus had been on completing the orders and then focusing on the next set of orders so we have embarked on an exercise now aimed at filling out the ip which has been created within the company and shelved to a large extent which we can now either monetize on a stand alone basis or combine it with the other ips which may be available within the company or externally available to create value so to our surprise we found that we had multiple products and technologies which had been created and then not acted upon any further post order completion and had just been filed away as the teams got busy in fulfilling other orders so taken out of cold storage and updated with the current tech standards we can productize these technologies on their own or combine them with other technologies and that's a low hanging fruit for us the incremental efforts at making this tech viable and commercial is minimal and offers us a easy way to monetize our efforts this exercise has been concurrent with identifying more project leaders within the company and ensuring that they share the vision which we are defining with you here and again i'm glad we took this effort and i have identified some serious talent which resides within the company the idea is going forward to empower these leaders and groom them into future project leaders with pnl responsibility eventually any organization especially a tech and ip driven organization like ours is only as good as its people and last 6 months of the senior management time has been spent in identifying talent and working around strategies which will lay the foundations for sustained future growth delivered by our talented next generation talent pool so these initiatives are hand in hands in glove with our leap strategy more project managers with a deep grounding in tech with a deep grounding in company culture not only lays the foundation for organic growth but also helps us think outside the box on a collaborative effort which underpin our leap strategy i'm glad to inform you that the base pillars of leap strategy which were around financial equitiveness productization and lean and learn implying a collaborative approach with external ip holders also is well on its way to deliver results glad to share that two definitive binding term sheets have been signed this past quarter alone one in the area of chip design services and another in the radar space while discussions have been initiated with multiple companies both listed space as well as in the smaller unlisted space for enhanced collaboration with the platform which astra provides to further enhance our joint intellectual property and create products which are well suited for the future we are also in a hurry to monetize things at the fastest possible pace and collaborations are possibly one way to go about doing this we aim to conclude a few such collaborative arrangements every quarter going forward and that is one of the base premises of our leap strategy to conclude astra will continue to build on its track record of delivering on its numbers and we will in all likelihood achieve our targeted 18 to 22% organic growth rate and leap strategy will has the potential to deliver a further upside onto these numbers the leap framework is very much in play and definitive collaborative agreements have been signed with two partner companies many more are in the works 
we are grooming our next generation of leaders with eventual responsibilities for project management and pnl responsibility will be run through them and multiple efforts are in place to lay the foundation for a sustained future growth to be led by our next younger generation so with this let's open it up for question answers please thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles First question is from the line of Amit Dikshit from ICICI Securities Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations for a good set of numbers. I have uh, three questions. The first one is essentially, if I look at uh, not Y O Y but Q O Q, a mix in revenue. So our domestic uh, uh, percentage has gone up. export has come down but still we find that ebitda margin has gone down compared to q4 so if you could just highlight what caused this whether it is execution of some low margin orders in this particular quarter and uh, how do we see this trajectory going ahead yeah amit complete your questions okay the second question is on uh, essentially very interesting thing that you highlighted on anti drone radar so are we limiting ourselves only to radar or there would be a soft skill and hard skill uh, mechanism also uh, and what kind of opportunity are we seeing uh, by end of uh, uh, let us say fy25 the third question is uh, that recently there was a media article suggesting that uh, we have uh, executed uh, aau for the ship bone radar so uh, just wanted to understand the opportunity size of this and when uh, we would be able to commercialize it okay amit i'll take the first question the remaining two mr emirati will take uh, it is very difficult to pinpoint exactly uh, why this uh, i had to really look at each individual uh, uh, product sale that has happened in the corresponding quarters to exactly answer your question but otherwise i would say that na in general uh, to a large extent about 90% uh, the margin variance comes in only because of the product mix uh, specifically to answer your question probably i have to uh, dig a little deeper and come back uh, i will not be able to answer right now <coughs> yeah mr amit uh, uh, regarding your second question about the anti drone uh, system yes we are working on the soft kill anti drone system but as a part of that we have completed the radar development portion and uh, we have released to the market as few customers are asking for only the radar portion and uh, also this soft kill uh, system is on the way i think maybe another few months we will be in a position to complete development of enter anti drone system with the jammer Uh, so hard kill is concerned that we are exploring that option but uh, we are it took you know uh, decide on that particular portion regarding the third question as far as the uh, wu of sba which we bagged from drdo and executed in the uh, last year and this year we are going to commission it uh, in the navy uh, yes there are good number of opportunities are there for this uh, what we heard from uh, the customers and uh, the navy that they are looking for a uh, minimum 2 uh, to 3 more in next 2 to 2 years time frame so this is what uh, we heard from them but unless we get a uh, firm rfp on hand it's difficult to commit anything on that front thank you so so given the uh, you know the, the opportunity size the uh, the new system that we have ads and all so what kind of order inflow could be expect uh, not for this year i mean uh, but for over next 3 years let us say if you are if you were to give a accumulated number on the basis of platforms we are involved etc yeah actually uh, we have already responding responded few rfps and uh, the current year the rfps what we have responded or we are expecting 
uh, to be received uh, the order of at least about 500 crores. But since they are in competition, uh, we are not sure how much we are going to grab from that particular segment. But actually, these are few inquiries which we are expecting from services that will have a large size of uh, business. For that, we are getting prepared ourselves to make full complete system. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Hiran Ved from Alchemy Capital Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Hiran and thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, you know, Mr. Atim Kabra mentioned about the LEAP strategy and I want to extend this a little bit further that given our size, which is, you know, just about 1,000 crores this year, as per our guidance, what stops us from growing at let's say 30, 40 percent, right? Is it uh, is it the lack of external opportunity, or are we too narrowly focusing on radars and certain segments of the defense industry? Uh, and secondly, if and it's the right thing to do, which is to invest in IP, but that requires serious capital. So how much money are you planning to spend on IP over the next couple of years? And why can't we aspire to have margins which are upwards of 20 to 25% if we have our own IP? Thanks. I'll answer this thing. Uh, let me take the IP question first, right? Okay. The IP... Astra, think of Astra as a platform for a second, right? We have a track record, we have the capability set, we have the marketing ability, et cetera, which has been there. Uh, and it's only now that we are opening it up uh, from an IP acquisition, IP collaboration point of view. You know, uh, we spoke about, you know, there are products, unfortunately, I cannot go into details of these products, but there are products which are being contemplated, where let's say if we had the capability to make uh, the radar, right, then can we add in the next logical step, which has to be taken in the battlefield, uh, if an incoming threat is detected by the radar, right, can my system alone do it? I may not have the necessary IP for that, okay? So do I create it from scratch? Do I reinvent the wheel? Or do I collaborate with somebody who has the IP and create a better product and combine our resources and create a product? It may not necessarily require Oodle capital to do so, by the way, right? Because it is equally in the interest of the other party also, so our collaborators, to commercialize their products. As I mentioned, two transactions have been done uh, and they will result in significant IP accretion uh, over a period of time for uh, Astra. We are, we are not really spending much on these acquisitions, uh, or on these IP collaborations, if I may say. So I would de-link, uh, you know, IP uh, from owning the IP exclu exclusively, but would rather focus on more collaborative approach. With Astra contributing a lot towards commercializing and taking the lead in creating products, which is which also links in with your earlier question. Right? Uh, we, you know, if you look at our history, uh, you know, we were quite small, and uh, we, have, we have crossed. We will, we will cross 1,000 crores uh, this year itself. And uh, our focus has been to, to productionize the orders which have been uh, coming in. Okay, Productionization of existing orders coming in and keeping pace with the growth, uh, in a way, did not give us the leeway or the time required or the effort required to productionize, uh, to sorry, to productize. So productionization versus productization, okay? Which is our focus going forward. So if you see, 
organic when we talk of organic growth organic growth is coming in from our regular productionization of the order flows which is coming in but now we given our size and as you very rightly said we have the size now okay where we can offer ourselves as a platform uh, and that will allow us to focus on products which on a recurring basis when they sell gives us the kind of margin expansion and sales expansion which we are looking for and that's where probably uh, the surprise which we speak about on account of uh, a leap strategy uh, will come in but let's wait for the time let 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 the numbers reflect what we are saying so right now we focus on when we give you the guidance we focus on the productionization of the order orders i hope i'm answering you i have answered your questions yes yes i have one more last question uh, that we have seen that uh, you know in in many defense companies uh, supply chain is becoming a big constraint and uh, you know are we working on uh, seeing that you know we are not constrained in terms of productionizing because of supply chain issues and creating enough uh, you know other sources uh, is something that you know we've seen with a lot of other players in the industry i uh, just wanted to have your views on how you guys are thinking about this constraint i don't think we are expecting any supply serious supply chain constraints uh, well i guess given the size given our management focus on the productionization front i think we are fairly well set on uh, you know in this particular area where we see constraints are on the evolving technology uh, where manpower is uh, trained manpower is hard to come by for the next gen of products where we need to leap frog into so to answer your question uh we are fairly well appraised of the supply chain uh, challenges and therefore resilience is being built into the system um of course you know if you have external events like sanctions and all that's a completely uh, separate game but other than that we don't significantly see any supply chain uh, challenges uh, just to add uh, to mr rafeen uh, see basically we import uh, electronic components and of course few complex uh, pcbs uh, from abroad but otherwise the rest are like you know uh, we be sourcing out from indigenization thing and also i would like to highlight one point here is uh, uh, we do ourselves with our strategic components as we design and we get it fabricated uh like mmics and all so these are our components which usually will have a serious impact based on the geo global political situation so there there's something which in fact is advantage to us that all these strategic components uh, we have uh, within our control otherwise uh, usually we don't have any supply chain issues for general electronic components or pcbs actually this is a very imp- important point and when you talk about competition probably you should consider the fact that we have a very significant net block which has been created okay so the capabilities have been created up front and now is the time to reap the benefits from the investments which have been made over the last so many years into the company so you know our return ratios were not looking good because the investments have been made up front and now as production scales up you will see our uh, ratios are you know it's, it's proof is in the proof of uh, proof is there already with you right our ratios are improving significantly okay thanks so much and all the best thank, thank you very you. much ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of kohl sarjeet Yadav from Mount Intra Finance Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, I just have one question uh, about the stages delay. So we are hearing couple of things that firstly the because of the G engines the stages is getting delayed. 
and secondly also the israeli company is unable to uh, provide the acer radar so uh, we are uh, our company has been supplying triple au for the acer so how do we see these two situation it looks like a risk because of the delays at the same time opportunity when we see the israeli company unable to supply can you comment on this sir yeah uh, on the first part of your question regarding the uh, supply issue of ge engine of course uh, we we cannot authorize to comment on that but uh, yes we also heard about this there were some issues but also we understand from the customer that they have been making uh, alternate arrangements and uh, i we, i don't think uh, they can put any you know uh, delay factor as as far as other sensors are concerned in fact the uttam radar whatever been planned is mm. uh, the discussions are going very actively and uh, maybe the next 3 to 4 months time frame we should be in a position to uh, you know get the first contract so this is the that is how the discussions are going on so we don't see any major uh, delays but though there will be slight delays and all but uh, i we don't see any major uh, you know issues as far as that particular part is concerned then second is uh, uh, regarding the uh, other you know imported radar which is not being functioned that also again we we are uh, not authorized to comment on that but yes uh, you know th- that is something which you know uh, the the rdo is trying to push uh, as early as possible to you know to ha and uh, probably we may get more quantity in case if israel cannot supply this particular radar so we are geared up as far, uh, as far as astra is concerned we are geared up to uh, produce in numbers in fact we enhanced our facility uh, recently we have added uh, auto uh, bonding facility by virtue of which in fact our uh, subsystems that is the tr module of those radars the we can produce uh, manifold in the sense about 20 times than what uh, we made it with semi automatic uh, facility so that way we have enhanced our uh, infrastructure we scaled up our capacity we are geared up to manufacture as many as numbers as we want thank you sir thank you for your response thank you very much the next question is from the line of ketan gandhi from gandhi securities and investments private limited please go ahead hi sir uh, just uh, two couple of question one uh, i just missed uh, did you give any guidance for the order intake for this year yeah we have given yeah uh, can you please repeat i just missed it i'm sorry in the range of uh, 1200 to 1300 crores okay great and sir uh, do you want to share any update on uh, manpack sdr yeah actually the uh, flight uh, there is final test uh, they are planning to conduct sometime in mid october uh, i think rest all the procedures have been through i think may mostly by mid october we will have a uh, you know field test uh, so once after that test we will come to know you know who are all will remain in the free so any final i mean to, how, total how many final contender for this last time you mentioned about 3 is it the same or any changes uh, yeah as of now it's 3 okay thank you and all the best sir. thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of neeraj mansinka from white pine investment management private limited please go ahead So just wanted to know what are the uh, top five programs that may uh, would be critical for the company for the next two years in terms of uh, order book. We can get you. Can you just uh, repeat again your question? My question is, uh, what are the top five programs that would be critical for our order book accretion and uh, revenue growth in the next two years? Yeah, there are many projects uh, as you know we we have been addressing uh, uh, you know radar and electronic warfare domain uh, especially if you take in the radar uh, you know we have been addressing airborne radar uh, and also the ground radars shipborne radars in all three segments um, in like airborne radars we we have been working for uh, awc mark 1 mark 1a 
and also we we are waiting for the RFPs for Mark II. Uh, similarly, like uh, LCA Mark One A, we are we are already there, and uh, we will be addressing Mark II. So there are many opportunities that are coming out. Similarly, there is uh, SU30 opportunities also will come. Of course, they are all in competition, so we have to wait and see how, how many we win in that. Uh, similarly, like uh, in the ground segment, there are many radars, like uh, we are talking about Kusha, like QRSAM, Akash NG, Akash Prime, uh, WLR, repeat orders, you know, these are all which uh, customers, uh, DPSs are likely to get. So we will be getting subsistence from that, those particular segments. And uh, shipboard uh, Navi, as I said, you know, we are likely to get some repeat orders uh, from Navi. Uh, so they, these are all some of the opportunities in as far as the radars are concerned. And in electronic warfare, we have been working for uh, part jammer for LCA Mark 1, and as well as we have been working on the ongoing uh, production programs of uh, BEL, uh, uh, like Nayan Shakti, Yemi Shakti, and all these programs, we are there. And also we are we are we are there in the uh, EW programs of uh, you know Bell like BR one one eight R one one eight so all these programs we have some orders on hand and we are mm -hmm. likely get more orders uh, repeat orders uh, on this you know uh, from these customers. Okay, but any anything which comes to your mind that these like for example uh, we have this uh, Uttam uh, radar. So any uh, any large uh, order that you think uh, you were assured, but you were so just a delay of the RFP? Yeah, actually, you see, the uh, mandate is clear. Uh, yes, uh, Air Force, I mean, like, you know, uh, HAL uh, is planning to take some quantity in the first phase. Uh, exact quantity will come to know in a couple of months' time frame, but yes, uh, uh, Similac has already given uh, clearance for uh, 12 numbers to for the first phase, and then thereafter well, they will induct more and more. And uh, going forward, yes, uh, there is a you know as you know all of you know this uh, 97 numbers more also the way has been cleared. So once they get uh, child gets contract, probably they will uh, start working in that also. So we are hopeful uh, to get more quantity uh, from Mark One itself. So last question. So, what is what is causing a delay in the in the uh, Virupaksha uh, uh, project? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, the customer, you know, DRDO is working on the configuration part. I think uh, this uh, what we understand that you know they are working on this configuration. Once they complete, they'll be floating RFPs, and uh, once they this in the competitive mode, so we'll be competing in that. Okay, but any any thoughts on when you see uh, this scale up uh, happening? A scale up of the Viru Paksha. Any any thoughts on when you see this? Uh, the first contract itself, that we know from the uh, DRDO, I think probably uh, we are expecting RFPs mostly by next quarter. Okay. So last question on the Akash Mitra and BDL has also put an RFP and RF seeker manufacturing facility. So and what I we thought was uh, you were one of the sole suppliers of that. So any comments on uh, how will it impact you? No, what uh, BDL has been set up the facility and manufacturing is the gym. I think it if I uh, you know understand better, I think it is a, a jumbal uh, seekers. But uh, no, what we are working is totally different. We are working on uh, as a seekers. And in that, uh, we got a few development contracts from DRDO. In one particular frequency band, we have already delivered, and we are expecting some small repeat order also. And other band, we are uh, you know trying to complete it by this month end. So we are working in a totally different technology as far as seekers are concerned. The other technology with uh, you know uh, BDL and uh, you know other companies uh, working on that. Those seekers also, we have RF components. We have been supplying uh, to PSUs uh, and uh, you know other uh, companies. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Rupesh Satya from Intel Sense Capital. Please go ahead. 
Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question, sir, is with respect to Uttam radar. So, in this, we only supply antenna units, sir, or we supply other components as well? We supply antenna active array unit, the uh, complete antenna unit. And other yeah. parts, there are two, uh, three more companies who have been supplying a small portion of it. But uh, the 75% of this radar cost, you know, is supposed to be antenna unit on this. And that is so exclusively supplied by us? As of now, yes, we are exclusively. As of right now, yeah. And, and sir, I mean, w w what would be the value per radar package? No, I don't want to go more specific into the radar cost and all, because this is an open conversation. I wanted to maintain confidentiality part. Okay. And, and sir, then what would be opportunity size? I mean, Uttam will be used in, I think, pages from 28 aircraft onwards. And then would it be also used in, you know, Sukhoi or Dornier upgrades as well? What is the opportunity size for Uttam radar? Well, uh, in fact, we are expecting around uh, close to uh, like, uh, 1100 to 200 crores worth of business from the Uttam radar uh, in the next three to four years' time frame. But it, it would be used in all these programs, sir? Tejas, Sukhoi, Dormi, or, or only no, in Tejas? I'm not talking about Sukhoi. Sukhoi is a different one. Uh, I'm not talking discussing about Sukhoi. You only LCM Mark 1 and I've considered. Uh, more on, you know, phase two also, phase one and phase two put together. Okay, okay. So LCA only, phase one and phase two, it is a 1100 yeah, crore opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then second question, sir, is on Ashwini radar. Are we involved in that program in India? Yes, we also bid for that. And, uh, you know, we are in competition. And uh, and I think, you know, uh, a tease is going on, so beyond that, we don't want to give any information. So yes, we are we have participated in that program. So, so when when is the result expected of that tender, Ashwini radar? And then would would I mean what what components would we be supplying, and what what would be I mean it, would it be significant to our side the the order size? So since it is a tender and RFP and in a competitive tender, I do not want to disclose more details about this. But we supply all the components or only one or two components? Maybe so that's this right. is what I'm saying. We, we do not want to uh, discuss anything beyond that. Okay. Okay. Please appreciate that fact. You know, this is a competition thing, competitive tender. I see. I see. Also, the next next question, sir, is we, I think we have a patent with, with I think, one of the labs for Netra uh, primary radar. So, and I think some order is expected in Metra or order is received. I, I, I am not clear. So, can you maybe talk about what, what kind of commercial orders are expected in Metra and then will we supply only primary radar or some other components as well? Uh, in Metra, is, uh, you are talking about uh, Mark 1, uh, AWC Mark yeah. 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mark so 1. We, yeah. We, we supplied, yeah, we supplied uh, subsystems of primary radar. And uh, this comp we have already supplied uh, in a few years back, and we are getting uh, some repeat contracts uh, for maintenance and also, you know, for one more aircraft, I think. So we we are get, we have orders on hand, uh, and also we are likely to get some <laughs> for the space. So, so Netra, sir, there is no kind of like active order. I, I thought there was an order for some 11 yeah, uh, order, electronic order. orders. And uh, is under execution. In this quarter, in Q2, we are going to execute that. OK, OK. And, and sir, this Samudrika program, there are, I think, sir, total seven. Sorry to you, sir. May we request that you return to the question queue, follow-up question, yeah, okay. as there are several participating. Okay. Thank you sure. very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participants. The next question is from the line of Ravindra Shah from RSH Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Serge. Uh, thank you so much for providing the opportunity. Uh, sir, um, I have two questions. The first question is, can you please elaborate a bit on your Bangalore facility? Like for which business this facility will be dedicated? Domestic, defense, space, or other business segments? 
uh, originally we have created that facility for our systems uh, integration and testing, uh, especially in the radar and electronic warfare domain. And we have built up uh, NFTR uh, facility also, and also assembly hangers uh, to handle and address the uh, radar systems. And also we have created a space division in more Bangalore facility. Uh, we have incorporated 100% uh, subsidiary unit, uh, Astra Space Technologies Limited. And that group is basically going to address all uh, future satellite requirements. And uh, that is work, they are also working in the same uh, facility. We have created the infrastructure to uh, meet that particular requirement. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, and what kind of opportunities do we foresee in the global biz space business on the BTS side? Uh, on the, in the, actually, we are focusing more in the uh, Indian market as of today. Uh, we would like to, you know, address this Indian market and then wanted to address the global market. Yes, opportunities are there. Opportunity size is very large uh, as far as the space uh, segment is concerned. So that is the reason why we are investing uh, into this particular uh, sector and uh, we are uh, planning to enhance our operations in this particular segment. But uh, to be precise figures and all, we, we, we don't have as much as far as the global business is concerned. But for Indian, yes, we have a figure based on that we worked out our business model. Okay, okay, that's it from my side. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Keshav Harlakka from BHH Security Private Limited. Please go ahead. I, I thank you, sir, for an excellent set of numbers. So, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, please. Yes. So, I just wanted to know about the seasonality of margins and revenues and uh, profits. So, we did a prof uh, EBITDA margin of 15.5% for Q1 of FY25 versus 2.3% for Q1 of FY24. And for Q4 of FY24, we did a margin of 22.8% versus year-on-year uh, -year margin of 12.2%. So, can you comment on the seasonality of margin, sir? See, basically, we have used the word seasonality because uh, uh, even as a top line, uh, if the, most of the top line uh, happens in uh, Q3 and Q4, and since the margins are directly related to the top line, we have used the word seasonality of the margins. Then again, answering the specific question, uh, in terms of the margins, what you have indicated, which I already answered earlier, essentially, you know, it all depends on the product mix. Suppose if I have a, a major defense product being sold in a particular period, probably my margins will be much higher than the previous uh, quarter where the sales would have been more towards the exports. So generally the product, the margins are directly related to the product mix. And hence, you know, we have the seasonality of the margins is indicated. Got it. Now, can we have some band or you can't, cannot predict the band? Would it be within 15% to 25% is what one could expect or you could, don't want to pass any comment on this? I can give an indicator gross margin. Below that, I do not want to get on. Okay. Uh, the gross margin is generally around 40 to 45 percent will be there. If my overall defense, I mean, the domestic mix is in excess of 70 percent in a in a particular period. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nishisha from RH Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So uh, I have one question. What kind of margins uh, does the space business comes with and is it same as the domestic defense orders or is it better than that? No, more or less, uh, we carry the same margins uh, between space and defense. Okay, okay, sir. That answers my question. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. 
thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will we will take that as a last question <clears throat> i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing remark thank you everyone for attending and sharing your thoughts i hope you have answered all your questions and look forward to meet you again at the end of q2 thank you very much and good evening thank you thank you guys bye bye on behalf of astra microwave products limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines